Mental illnesses include many different conditions that vary in degree of severity, ranging from mild to moderate to severe. Joining us is Don Parker, President of Behavioral Healthcare Services for Hackensack Meridian Health. Don, welcome. There are levels of severity, and that's generally how we break down behavioral health issues. There are some who, uh, where cir circumstances are such that you can live a relatively normal life with occasional uh, episodes of behavioral health, whether it's depression or or it's anxiety. Uh, when it becomes more debilitating uh, in the in the medium stage of a disease, you need more attention, more attention from therapists, more attention from a potentially a medication. And then when it gets severe, you're likely to be hospitalized for it so that we can get uh, the right type of regimen of care for you down to help you recover. So I said the word disorder at the very beginning. Is it in fact a disorder or how do we identify what concerns people have and where we, I don't wanna say categorize them, but where they fall under? Like, is it anxiety? Is it depression? Is it, you know, we hear terms like bipolar. Well, so you would look at some that are organic that are part of your genetics. Uh, and you can certainly go through families and see behavioral health issues replicate over generations. Uh, and so that's a set of behavioral health issues. Those issues may be exacerbated by your life experience. So it's nature and nurture. And when it comes to nurture, uh, if you have trauma in your life, if you if repeated trauma, it is likely that you will manifest characteristics consistent with your genetics. Uh, so it's a nature nurture constantly going on and it depends on what's going on in your life. Level of stress, the level of trauma, the level of dis-ease that you are in. Generally, patients don't come to us unless their life is being disrupted by something. And so their normal routines aren't normal anymore. Uh, and uh, so we have both significant amount of training. So a psychiatrist gets the same amount of training as a doctor who's going to be a surgeon. Uh, uh, they go to the same amount of medical school, they go to the residencies, they go to fellowships, uh, and they use uh, a system uh, that's been developed by psychiatrists across the country called DSM. Uh, and uh, that manual allows us to look at symptoms and then correlate it with diagnoses. It, is, it would be like a blood test, but it's done with words uh, and behavior and, and the analysis of it. Uh, and we will then use that as a framework to look at what kind of interventions, whether it's talk therapy, it's medication, uh, it's changing uh, your venue, uh, getting you out of stressful situations. There are all different kinds of things that we may recommend to help you deal with a dis the distraught condition that may come out of a pandemic or, or the, the isolation of that pandemic. So we're constantly looking at the interplay of your life with your environment, with the stresses that you're experiencing, with your genetic predisposition. We take a history when we're meeting with you. Uh, and, and in today's world, we can literally look at the genetics uh, that, uh, that you have uh, to find whether in fact you have a predisposition. We mentioned the pandemic. Have you found that since that period, the stigma that tends to go along with mental health concerns has reduced a bit? Well, the, the stigma is different today. Uh, and it's because of what is an unintended silver lining uh, to the pandemic. And that is before the pandemic, one out of five individuals required mental health on an annual basis. Today, one out of three individuals, that's an exponentially large increase in the experience of mental health challenges. That has changed the dialogue. More people are talking, more people understanding, more people accepting. All of those changes have allowed us to reduce the stigma uh, of behavioral health. Uh, we More of us are experiencing it. We understand it more. Uh, and then, frankly, also the news is covering it more. We also, by the way, have more funding as a result of that. The government, this is the first time that I can remember in my life since President Kennedy, where the president actually spent a significant part 
of his State of the Union address on behavioral health issues. And he had a whole list of things that the federal government was going to engage in to help elevate behavioral health uh, and, and care. So I expect that we're going to get more science out of this period uh, than we ever have. In the areas of science, where do you think, where do we take this or where should the funding go? Well, I, I, I frankly think genetics is going to be a uh, terribly important part of this. Uh, the nature nurture issue uh, is started with your genetic predisposition. We need to know more about your genetic predisposition. Just the way you know that you may have diabetes and, or heart disease in your family, we can determine whether in fact you have genes that predispose you to mental health issues. That would help us in the same way your doctor helps you adjust your diet to adjust your lifestyle uh, and help you become more resilient, help you manage uh, the conditions and the circumstances that give you mental health challenges. Uh, and, and so that we can be better at designing even uh, for that matter, non-medicinal interventions, uh, integrative medicine interventions, diet interventions. There's lots of natural holistic ways to help you manage behavioral health issues. Uh, we wanna make sure that we find out what you may be predisposed for and then help you ad adjust ahead of time before you ever experience a debilitating episode of behavioral health. You mentioned holistic measures. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. Uh, uh, during the pandemic, we have uh, engaged in a significant amount of what's called integrative medicine, where we teach patients how to handle stress. Uh, when they get uh, stress, what to do about it, how they can manage it when they're in deep uh, distress, how they can handle depression uh, and manage uh, their de own depressions, how they use relaxation exercise, how they can change their diet. What would you say in general to individuals who may think, you know what, I have this, I'm fine. You know, I, you know, I just need to, you know, just get a better handle on the situation or, you know, I'm going to talk to, to my friend about this. What would you suggest as somebody in the medical field, specifically dealing with behavioral health? How do we make it okay for individuals to have this dialogue and feel like there's there's nothing wrong with engaging in in conversations about fears that you may have, concerns that you may have. You know, usually when when something interferes with your life, uh, you know, thing, anxiety uh, keeps you from getting to places that you need to go, like work or school, or or you're involved in a play, or it's with your family. You know, if if, if you become reluctant to do the things that sustain you, then you should probably see someone. Usually you trust your family doctor, somebody who's been with you for a while. And even a new family doctor, they spend time getting information from you. They find about, out about your life. They, they find your vital signs. I mean, they are involved in intimate exchange with you about your health conditions. Uh, and they are a good person uh, to start with. And the family doctor can lead you to the right professional. Uh, and the right professional may help you access other professionals. So if you see a social worker, and you're seeing me, I'm a social worker, I may say to you, Mabel, uh, I think that you may benefit from a, a medication for your anxiety that will help relax you a little bit more, that will, when you get overly anxious, you can uh, be able to access the medication and help you only in situational uh, circumstances. So uh, getting you the right start getting you to the right person, getting you the right medication are all steps that you can take to stabilize your mental health issues. And then the social workers, especially and the psychologists, can help you with lifestyle issues. It's changing your job, changing your friends, changing your routine, changing your diet, all the different things that may be impacting on your behavior. We can help you with plans uh, once we, we identify the plans that are disruptive to you or exacerbate your conditions. Don, I really want to take this opportunity to thank you for elaborating on this subject. And we covered uh, just a, an array of topics all pertaining to behavioral health, everything from what I said at the very beginning, mild to moderate to severe. So we really value uh, the information you were able to provide. Mabel, this is a complex subject uh, and it takes questions and it takes answers to get find a pathway. 
And hopefully uh, we've put you in a situation where you can think more effectively about where you can ask those questions and where you can get the answers to assist you to lead a more healthy life.